One of the reasons to learn grappling skills is the bad guy might have them as well and you need to know how to defend against them. Hi friends, welcome to today's lesson here at Active Self Protection. I'm your host, John Correa. Today we have two videos, one from Brazil and one from South Africa, but the theme is the same. My family and my staff are all covered by firearms legal protection because there is no better resource to help good, sane, sober, moral, prudent people after a use of force. They now have a great newsletter available to everyone for free as well. Sign up at the link below and check out their coverage too. Don't forget to thank them for bringing us today's video. You can see the guy standing there looking at his phone when he watched the guy walk up behind him and just jump on his back and start to choke him. And our dude is going to go down to his knees and put his cell phone down here in just a second while he's trying to you know, protect himself from the rear naked choke. When he puts his phone down, an accomplice comes and grabs it and that's gonna be enough to get this guy off of his back. He didn't even file a police report apparently. In this second one, we see this guy walking down the road here. Dude's gonna, again, come up and just rear naked him and put him right out. His partner's gonna show up and start rifling through that guy's pockets. They stole cash from him as well as his mobile device. According to the news story that I've linked in the description, both of these robbers were caught. The businessman was not badly injured. He comes to right there at the end. Um, this, these perps were known in the vicinity in the area and had a lengthy criminal history. Thankfully, they were caught. All right, question for you out of today's video. Have you worked on the mat against a rear naked choke? I'm a white belt in jiu-jitsu, been studying jiu-jitsu for a couple years, and you know, we work on that all the time because dudes choke you to death all the time. So how about you? What kind of martial arts background do you have working against a choke like this? Big problem in this first one, you have a guy who is in a transitional space and not paying attention. So he's standing on the sidewalk here and fiddle farting around on his phone. And that is a recipe for disaster. So remember that transitional space is anywhere that people can attack with an element of surprise, get away quickly and find valuables. And that's exactly what we have here because this guy is standing here. He is the valuables with his phone, his wallet, his keys, his person. So again, when you're in a transitional space, put the phone in your pocket, if at all possible, to very least back your back up to the wall or something. Now, this guy comes around and starts grabbing a hold of him, but our dude is actually fairly big, so he has a moment here to kind of orient himself and try to protect himself. Now, of course, I'm gonna tell you, if you're gonna really work on this stuff, you better get to the mats if you're gonna try to defend yourself against this and go to your empty-handed skills training. I can describe it to you on, in YouTube, but you gotta practice it in order to do it well. That yes, you gotta use both your hands on the arm that's trying to choke you. We call that paying the bills. Get your hips off of his and try to get around him in order to get this off of you. But you gotta practice that, and by the time he gets both uh, his hooks in here and his legs on, you're in real trouble. And I know plenty of people that are firearms carriers are gonna say, well, I'll just draw my gun and shoot him or whatever, but your gun is almost certainly on your waist. And, and what are you gonna do here? He's got his legs wrapped around your waist. Your ability to get to a gun here, very, very limited, like incredibly limited. And also you better be able to, to bide the time to get to it because you're only gonna have a few seconds, like two to three seconds tops before the lights go out. So very difficult to do. You gotta have the empty handed skills as well. Now he goes down to the ground here, puts his phone down. Okay, I will tell you, let this stuff go. Worry about your airway first. Now, you know, again, that idea that says, okay, there's another bad guy, whatever. Your bigger thing here is worrying about your life. Now, thankfully this guy just goes and runs away. Now, I want to note here in this particular case, this one's actually a whole lot more difficult because you notice he grabs a hold of him and instantly sinks in the entirety of the rear naked and our victim is off balance. And one of the things that I want you to recognize and what the realities are here is how fast you go out at this kind of stuff. Now, this particular one, I don't know that he's going to really be able to defend himself in any significant way because again, he's got a guy on the front of him and watch just in a matter of about three seconds, he is completely out. And this is the reality of a rear naked, of a vascular neck restraint of some kind that you go out in just a couple of seconds. And people think that, that they have the superhuman ability to resist that, and it's just not the case. And the where you learn that is actually on the mats. And the defense against that is getting to the mats so that you know what to do in that moment. And, and yes, could this guy, because his hands are free, have drawn a firearm in the three seconds that he had to recognize what was going on and respond to it? Possibly, but probably not. Now also notice he is gonna finally kind of get up here relatively quickly. The blood comes back, the consciousness comes back. Okay, fine. Now, 
let's talk for just a minute and people are going to ask, well, wait a minute then, John, then these were deadly threats. Well, it recognized that in reality, if, if as a general rule, a rear naked choke was a, did deadly harm, then every jiu-jitsu competition in the world would be banned instantly. That's just not what happens. But that said, a jiu-jitsu competition, people know how to tap and they know how to get rid of that stuff. On the streets, generally speaking, if somebody causes you to lose consciousness, I think you can assume that they mean you enough ill intent that it's likely to cause you death or great bodily harm. And therefore you can probably respond okay with significant force up to and even including deadly force. Though I want you to definitely look at your local laws and talk to an attorney in your area to make sure what your jurisdiction says about that. That said, I think what we see here on the video is whether or not it's justified, you ain't gonna have the ability to do that because you don't have enough time. The answer here, prevention and, and paying attention and having the significant, strong, empty-handed skill set to do the best you can. And I also think at the very end of that second one, recognize you can't win every fight. You just do the best you can to cover your ASP.